and seated herself with, she was whipped by her teacher speaking loudly at school. He whipped her so hard it pulled soft flesh on her forearms to bleed and smell like a tattoo. Words can't express how I felt. Uh, she told me that. How can people be so mean as to whip innocent children speaking their own language at school? Here's a picture of my grandma on the left. Although she was punished for speaking Māori at school, she became a strong advocate of the Māori language and a teacher in a kōhanga reo, Māori language kindergarten. Sadly, she passed away in 1995, in fact, 30 years ago to this day. Mm. But the policy of punishing Māori children for speaking Māori at school didn't stop there. It continued for over 100 years until the late 1960s. In the middle of this photo, you see my mother. She too was punished for speaking Māori at school in the 1950s. However, like her mother, she too carried on speaking Māori and became a Māori language teacher in the community. But here's a picture of her teaching. She passed away in 2017. And although they're not here, Christmas, I feel the Christmas. I honor them. I thank them for giving me the special gift of the Māori language. My mother and grandmother inspired me to become a Māori language lecturer. In fact, 30 years ago, today, I remember because my grandmother passed away the same day I became a university lecturer. But she inspired me, and so did my mother, to become a lecturer, a author of books, and to help develop a platform which I'll talk about soon. Did I mention that my daughter, isn't she beautiful, on the left, is also a Maori language lecturer in a local community college where I lived in the North Island of New Zealand. So we have four generations of Maori language teachers, champions of the language in my media family. Language revitalization requires intergenerational transmission, for it only takes two generations to lose a language, but it takes at least four to five generations to get it back again. I want to show you this graph here. Language loss didn't just happen in New Zealand, but across the world. But here in the USA, native children were also punished for speaking their native tongues during a colonial era. In New Zealand, this graph shows that there was an 80% decline in Maori language speakers between 1901 and 2024. Languages died, not with a bang, but with a whisper. The quiet absence of words once spoken between generations. As a result of colonial policies like the Native Schools Act, there was a significant decline in the number of Maori language speakers in New Zealand. The colonial policy stripped my people of their language to the point of near extinction. I felt hopeless. I thought, what's the point? We should just let the language die a natural death. And then I remembered my grandmother getting whipped and the famous cry of my two boy people, Kafa Fai Tonu Mato, we will fight for our language forever and ever. Never give up, never lose faith, never lose hope. I was reminded of a protest in 1972 where Māori marched the parliament. And I stand before you, my brothers and sisters, not to mourn about the declining state of the Māori language. I am here to share a revolution. We are at a turning point in history. We now have tools that my grandmother never had at our fingertips. We are now in an age of technological revolution the world has never seen before. When we use digital technologies that we have today, we can revitalize languages that are in danger of extinction. We are doing it in New Zealand with the Maori language, so why can't we do it here in the USA? So we began looking at other languages like Hebrew, and we came across the words of a language revitalization expert named 
Joshua Fishman, who created an eight-step method to revive the Hebrew language as a spoken language after two millennia of not being spoken. Dr. Fishman said you need one million speakers to revive the language. I thought, New Zealand, we don't have that sort of population. How do we revive a language with less than 150,000 speakers and less than 350 registered Māori language teachers? The answer became clear as day. When we use digital technologies, we can revitalize the Māori language. So in 2019, we began developing our e-books and our online platform from beginner 101 to advanced level 202. We filmed video tutorials, developed speech recognition functionality, automated quizzes and tests, and we called it Reo Ora, which means living language. R-E-O-O-R-A. In 2021, we took our platform, Real Order, to the next level. And we enlisted the help of an award-winning Maori software developer, Peter Lucas Jones, named on Time 100 AI list of 2024 for his work around preserving the Maori language through AI technology. With his help, we developed an API that can measure the accuracy of your pronunciation with a 92% accuracy rate. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. Our, our online platform has piqued the interest of thousands of people to learn the Maori language who have never set foot in New Zealand. People worldwide are curious about learning the Maori language, even though they have never met a Maori person in their life or know anything about our language and culture. Why? Because Maori isn't just a language. It's a way of thinking, a way of seeing the world, a way of connecting to people, land, spirit, and a community of learners worldwide. And here's something incredible. Learning an indigenous language like Maori rewires your brain. Scientists have found bilingual brains are more flexible, creative, and even more resistant to diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's. But learning Māori does something unique. It deepens one's sense of connection. When you learn Māori, you're not just learning grammar and vocab. You're learning songs. Waiata. Haka! War dances, proverbs, which I will teach you, share with you in a minute. Genealogical connections between people, place, and purpose. You start to think relationally. You start to begin to see yourself as part of something greater than yourself. And here's why digital technology is so important. It makes language learning accessible on a global scale. You don't need a classroom. And you don't need to move to New Zealand. You need a mobile phone and a willingness to learn. Digital technologies personalize the learning journey. They meet you where you are. They correct you, encourage you, give you the freedom to learn the language, the language in your own time and at your own pace. In my 30 years of teaching Maori language in universities, I found that the biggest impediment to learning a language is the fear of making a mistake in public. Learning through online digital technologies can help you overcome this fear without judging you. For example, we have developed an AI tool that can measure the accuracy of your spoken Māori language with a green light which says you said it correctly, an orange light which means you almost said it correctly, and a red light which means try again. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that way better saying it wrong in front of a digital device that embarrassing yourself in front of the class? The old way of learning doesn't work for everyone. But the new way of learning does work. With our new traffic light system, you can gain confidence and master your pronunciation of our language. This isn't just about saving the Maori language or Maori people. It's about saving the Māori for humanity, the sake of humanity. Every language, it takes with it a unique way of understanding the world 
And here's the truth. The more of us who speak Maori, the stronger it becomes. Join our technology revolution. We need one million people to speak Maori by the year 2040. And we cannot do it alone. We need your help. Regardless of where you live in the world, or your ethnicity, or your religion, help us regain our language again. Try learning some Maori online. Simple things like, hello, kia ora. See you later. Ka kite. Ka kite. Ka pai. Great. Ka pai. I like my Māori language. My Māori float was taken from me. But by using digital technologies and AI and digital platforms like TEDx, we can reclaim our language. We can reclaim our magic cloak. We can reclaim our tenakui. Tenakui. I feel much better now that I've reclaimed my magic cloak. And reclaimed my mana, my power, that was taken away from me, just like my language. Now we want to reclaim our language. We need your help. I want to conclude this talk by teaching you a small but powerful Maori problem which demonstrates how the Maori language can make you feel more confident in yourself, make you feel more connected. Remember, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about us. The proverb goes like this. Ko o, ko koe. Ko koe, ko o. I am you. And you are me. And together, we are one. Tato, tato, e. Thank you.